Good evening and welcome to Sunday Night's Nightcap. Um, to most of the regular viewers, you will know who I am. I'm Emmy. I'm John's daughter. I'm here for a little while visiting the family over the holidays and it wouldn't be a visit to Newcastle if I didn't make my appearance on the Nightcap and say hello to all of the fans. Um, tonight I've got a very special task. My dad's asked us to draw a name out of the hat to see who wins this Moore and Wright micrometer. Can't I? Don't know what it does but it looks pretty snazzy. Um, so, I'm going to pick the name out of the bag, very high tech, right, and the name is hopefully something I can pronounce, Rex Henry, so congratulations Rex Henry, you've won this fabulous Moir and Wright micrometer, um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show, finally, after asking for two years, I have got my own Twisted Engineering t-shirt, so thanks dad, so it was worth coming just to get my new t-shirt, so enjoy the show guys and I'll see you again soon, thanks, bye! Thanks very much for that, Amy, you're certainly going to be a hard act to follow. I'll get this micrometer in the post this week. Right, tonight's nightcap, I've got quite a lot of machining, nearly all lathe work, um, I'll finish off the protector for the end of the lathe spindle on the Harrison lathe, it didn't actually go according to plan, but I managed to salvage. Well, I'll let you watch the video and see what you think. I also went down to Richard's steam wagon on Saturday. I uh, did a little bit of work on there. I'll put a little bit of video up of that. My friend Bob brought the travel dial back that I gave him two or three weeks ago. He's took it apart and rebuilt it. It's absolutely fantastic. And Bob was saying this one is actually better than the one I've got on my lathe. So I'm going to put this one on my lathe and possibly give you that one away, I don't know, uh, Bob doesn't want it, so it could be a, for a future giveaway. He also brought one or two DTI gauges that he's stripped and rebuilt, um, just to give away, so tonight's giveaway is going to be a DTI gauge, nice little DTI gauge, I'll get a close up of it, English one. Same format as usual, if you want to be in the draw for the DTI gauge, all you've got to do is send me an email with your name on, first and last name, not just a, not just a bill or a friend, it's got to be first and last name, uh, that's my email address up there, your name will go into a hat, and either Emmy or Deb or somebody will draw the name out of the hat, if they draw your name, you'll win it, I'll post it off to you anywhere in the world, totally free of charge. Once you've won something, your name doesn't go back in the hat, but all the names remain in the hat until, until whatever. This is the DTI gauge that Bob's kindly donated. It's a nice accurate one, it's only, it's only 20 thou per half turn, 40 thou a turn. World Dark, made in England. Quite nice little DTI, and that's what's going to be given away this week. This is the travel dial I bought. I really only bought it to get the box, but Bob's worked his normal magic on it. And it's uh, working a charm, very nice. I think it's an older one than mine. Anyway, well, once again, Bob, thanks very much, mate. Much appreciated. Right, it's now 2017, I'm back in the workshop, uh, the thread's well on its way. I've had one or two comments on last week's video saying that this thread's actually 60 degree. Um, I'm going to carry on machine this one at 55, and then I'll see what sort of fit it is, but I think I'm quite right, I think it should be a, a 6 TPI thread, but 60 degree. Right, I left it ready to take another cut so we'll do that and basically the thread is going to be finished when the tool starts to kiss that face there Yeah. 
Well, that's really done that the world of good. And it was this last cut as well. I did think about putting the centre in there because I've got one, you know what I mean. That's it, that Kiwi over there, I'm going to try, the, try it on. Just on the minimum, it may be alright. It'll probably be alright actually. I'll try to clean this up with a file. It is a mess. And now you cut it was good so nicely as well. I've cleaned the ferret with a small file, it's actually screwed on quite nicely. What I should have done, and I actually thought about doing, was simply putting the jig we made into there and put a centre in. Remember what I said whenever you make something you put a centre hole in? I could have put a live centre in there and it would have taken all the side load off that. I don't know why I didn't do it. I thought about doing it, I just I just didn't do it. So I'll cut the threads on this side but I'll use it a 60 degree tool so we can get that one perfect and then I'll put the, the forge or chuck back on with a steel blank in and get back on with the collar chuck. But at least this is still usable, just once parting off. And I've got a machine, a Kiwi in there. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with that. But. Well, that's a nut loosened off, and it's got a good hole on the tape, that's with that. Still usable. The aluminium really wants to stick onto the end of this parting tool and feel it. I'm going to finish machining this now, I'm just going to skim the end off, round it off and then put a nice little tape around there. Basically the same as that one. And luckily I was able to save the thread. I managed to salvage the thread on the first of the protectors and that's going to be alright. And what I need to do now is put the keyway in there. The keyway is not that important. On the protector but it is quite important obviously when you put a big chuck on a big heavy drive it'll drive on a combination of the kiwi and the taper i've bronze welded a bit of 3 8 tool steel on it just a bit of round bar that's what size that is in there that's actually 3 8 square so i'm hoping to use that as a type of brooch in the milling machine just to gently up and down, up and down like a manual shaping machine and hopefully I'll be able to cut the kiwi. I'll probably put a miller cutter down first to take the thickest of it out. What I need to do first is make sure that this hole is in centre of the spindle. There's several ways of doing it. One easy way is just to use a tape on the end of that chuck. Just use that to line it up. It's point this complicated thing. So if I loosen off the, the clamp bolts, if 
clamp that down like that, that's got that held in the middle of the cord getting there. Nip them up. Lock the Y axis off on the lathe. Like that. So now we'll know that this is dead in line with the centre of that. We'll come onto this edge. I'll put a middle cutter down first and then try me shapey tool. I can lock the spindle up on the middle to stop the front turn. I'll put a middle cutter in just to give it a start to take the thickest out of it. See the, the cut has a nice fit in the slot. And I've also got a lock and screw so I can lock the, the spindle of the machine up. It certainly seems to be working. I don't know how to work with the, the steel slot and the collet holder, but it's certainly working on this. This is certainly having a desired effect, it is putting quite an nice key in. The problem we've got now is it's actually gone down to full depth of the tool, it's actually hitting it's hitting the round mandrel now. So what I need to do is make another tool, but this time raise the tool on in an angle like that, so there's plenty of clearance behind it. But it, uh, it's going to work. It's going to work quite well. Right, next thing is to bronze weld or brace that into there. That's got plenty of clearance now to do the job. Right, I've managed to get the tool brazed in, got it all set up again. And this one's definitely going to do the job. Like I say, I don't know how to fair cut the AM16 steel, but it's certainly working quite nicely on the aluminium. It's actually cutting, it's cutting quite nicely, it's hard work but it is doing the job. 